Greetings, fellow scribes. Welcome back to the archive. This week I begin the three-part series on Cyberpunk 2020. This week I will be discussing the setting. Next week I will be discussing character creation. And the third week I will be discussing the core mechanics and systems. Cyberpunk 2020, released in 1990 by Art Halsorian Games, is the most iconic of the cyberpunk editions, setting the standards by which all future ones are held to. In fact, it is this standard that is why the third edition, Cyberpunk V3, which involved radical changes to the game, to the setting, and all that, bombed. But, all that said, it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy as I talk about Cyberpunk 2020. Before I begin, let me just say, if you like this video, please click like and subscribe in the bar below. Leave me comments, follow me on Twitter, tell me what you like, what you didn't like, what you'd like to hear me talk about more of in the future. Any comments help me improve the channel. I'm always looking for good feedback. Support me on Patreon. Link in the description. Any support helps. Helps keep me in books. Keep the channel going. With all that said, let's just get right on into this, shall we? With any cyberpunk setting, one of the first questions you have to ask is, where does it break from real world? For Cyberpunk 2020, that break is 1990. While, yes, the Soviet Union still falls, and yes, East and West Germany are still reunited in 1990, other things begin to shape how everything else plays out. The U.S. gets involved in the first Central American crisis. And, and of course, South Africa, the country of South Africa falls. With no information coming in and out for four years. But, those are just sort of the tips of the iceberg. That's where everything breaks off from our world, where history follows a different path. And there are a number of significant events. I'm just going to go over some of the highlights. So, just bear with me. I'm not going to go over the whole 30-year timeline. Just the highlights. 1992, the DA created some specific designer plant plagues and released them worldwide. They specifically targeted opium and coca plants, destroying the major sources of major illegal drugs. In 1993, Colombian drug lords in retaliation detonated a small tactical nuclear device in New York City. Miraculously, only 15,000 people were killed. In 1996, there was a rather interesting event that cast a very long shadow. Mobs rioted across the U.S., and killed criminal defense attorneys. This led to the institution of martial law in the US. This would last for three years. During this time, it was discovered that, you know what? The draconian nature of the Universal Code of Military Justice worked. And so, as part of the 
ending of the martial law was the creation of the Universal Code of Civilian Justice, which was just as strict, though perhaps a little bit more compassionate, just a little bit more. And with that, you had a swift, efficient justice system versus the real-world one where trials could last for years, etc., etc. It was literally moved to a swift, efficient system. Death penalty becoming the standard in all murders. And most things involving ending up with prison time, probation, and stuff like that, not really a thing. If it was serious enough to get you brought before a judge, it was serious enough for you to do time in prison. And because it was a unified code, there was no room for judicial discretion any longer. It was, here's the crime, here's the penalty. Bam. And that was some of the major stuff just before the year 2000. Of course, in 1999, millennial cults began springing up, and January 1st, 2000, many of those millennium cults went into riots of suicidal destruction, because the world was going to end that day. Why do anything else? By 2001, with a network of satellites from the WorldSat network in place, the framework for the net was up and in place. The cyber modem, which would eventually lead to cyber terminals, was developed in 2005. And NetWatch the sort of governing body for the net was enacted by joint U.S. and Euro Theater Treaty in 2013. With the third corporate war in 2016 fought entirely online. Now, during all this time, a number of interesting things are going on. There's economic collapses in the U.S. that utterly destroys the middle class. There is no middle class. You're either rich or you're a corporate slave. And what this has led to is, of course, a greater income inequality in the U.S. And this has also led to you've got the main retail districts in the cities that are well defended, well patrolled, spotless, clean, cleansed of any signs of poverty, and ringing them are combat zones where various gangs will fight because they can't get into the retail areas. And in secured enclaves away from the heart of the city is where all the corporate people live in their guarded enclaves of suburbia while everyone else lives in squalor. However, while the U.S. ended up like that, with 
uh, plant plagues destroying most crops in the U.S. and Canada and destroying the family farm where all food production in the U.S. now is done through vast, sprawling estates of agricorps. where the roads between cities are lawless domains pretty much run up and down by the groups called nomads and booster gangs. That's the U.S. Europe is good. Europe has a solid economy. In fact, Europe's economy is so solid that the U.S. uses the Eurocred for most transactions because the Eurocred is more stable than the U.S. dollar. And what Europe has done, what the Euro Theater has done, is it started looking at Africa and it started building the Kilimanjaro space, um, Kilimanjaro mass driver, not a space elevator, mass driver, which is how they send material up to the various space stations. And there are a lot of space stations in Cyberpunk 2020. But what happened with Europe putting this focus on building up the industry in in equatorial Africa was it ended up boosting Africa. Most of the warlords have gone away because the entire industry of Africa has been geared towards two things. Providing food for the people who are working around the equator and all the people working around the equator putting in effort and work to generate this new industry of all the mass drivers, of all the space support going up, all the technical support. And this has had a significant impact on Africa itself. Of course, what happened in the Middle East well, in 1997, in the Middle East, is what's called the Meltdown. What this event was is all the countries in what we think of as the Middle East, with the exception of Israel, Syria, and Egypt, were on the receiving end of their own massive limited nuclear exchange. Egypt, Syria, and Israel were able to use their fighters and technology that they had to shoot down the suicide bombers with nukes that were coming into their areas. Everywhere else, not so much. And yes, that's pretty much what happened in the Middle East. World oil supply was reduced by half. Fortunately, a few years ago in 1991, an alcohol-based fuel was developed. And in 2020, most cars either use this alcohol-based fuel or liquid methane. 
hardly anything uses petroleum anymore. And that is the world that we come into in Cyberpunk 2020. Now, the default setting for Cyberpunk 2020 is the corporate-run utopia of Night City. Night City is a city that ostensibly has no government control over it and is completely run and organized by the corpse. You have the various divisions for law enforcement, of course, including, you know, the cyber crimes units, and and then they've got something called C SWAT. These are elite law enforcement officers who deal with one specific thing only. Augmented people who've gone into full-on cyberpsychosis and have gone crazy and started killing people. Or just any aug heavily augmented person who's way more than a standard beat cop could handle. Because, yeah. Of course, this is a cyberpunk setting, so you've got various cybernetic augmentations. And of course, those augmentations range from, you know, standard stuff like synthetic limbs, weapons in your arm, target enhancements, you know, synthetic muscle boosts, things like that, to full conversion military cyborgs, where you're pretty much a brain in a box that can take hits from military grade weapons. And of course, everything in between. And of course, there's sculpted augmentations, what they call exotics, which to the modern person would be furries. And just every other instance you can think of. It's a lot to take in. There's a lot of possibilities. But, with all that said, Cyberpunk 2020 is still one of the most iconic cyberpunk settings out there. And I look forward to seeing what the next edition ends up looking like with their updates to the setting. And next week, I'll be talking about character creation for Cyberpunk 2020, which to me is one of the more unique character gen methods. So until then, it's like you all remember to have fun and keep gaming.